I really wanted a Fujifilm X100V. But the problem is everybody wants the Fujifilm X100V. Between that and supply chains and chip problems, it's sold out everywhere. So I decided to get something different. Let's take a look and see what I got. Smaller box. Lens cap, thread cover, hot shoe cover, instruction booklet, empty unopened plastic bag. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Battery charger. Not an instruction booklet. Real instruction booklet. Claims to be instruction booklet. This looks like the plug that goes into this. This is the Fujifilm X100F. Hey, look at that. I was gonna buy one of these. I didn't know it was coming with this. Thumb grip and the foldable one so you can get access to the dial. This is like uh, $60, brand new. Also came with a lens hood, which I didn't know was coming with either. And a different lens cap, battery, Good. Real deal. Fuji battery. Oh, look at that. The converter ring is on here too. The X100 line started with the X100, which was the first camera. The second camera was called the X100S. S stood for second. Then came the X100T. T stood for third. Then came the X100F. F stands for fourth. And V stands for five because you can't do F twice. <laughs> so as far as getting close to the X100V, the F is as close as you can get. But there are differences. The X100F has a D-pad and a joystick. I had a D-pad on the Sony NEX7, or have, I guess I should say. D-pad's nice because you don't have to go into menus, which is one of the things that's great about this camera in general. Knobs, switches. Sony had some knobs, but these were, you know, you could make these whatever you wanted. Another key difference on the F is the screen doesn't flip out. Apparently there's a lot of debate about the flip screen, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I had flip screen on the Sony, which is pretty similar to the one on the V. I never used it. I did use the flip screen on my Canon G7X, but that's because I was vlogging. So both of those changes don't really mean much to me, so. I don't feel like I'm losing anything. Another difference between the two is the lens. The F has the original lens that goes all the way back to the X100. A lot of people didn't like the lens because when you got up close and you opened your aperture all the way up to two, everything was a little soft. One of the other differences between the X and the F is this knob here. It has a collar around it that you lift, spring-loaded, see? When I let go, it drops down. What that allows is this knob to be multifunctional. So when the collar's down, I believe this is your shutter speed. And then when you lift it up, you're adjusting your ISO. That's not the part people had a problem with. The part they had a problem with was that spring. So with the X100V, they made it so that when you lift that up, it stays until you push it back down. Neither of those things bother me. In fact, I kind of like them. I kind of like, I don't think this is that hard to use. And I kind of like that the lens is going to be soft. I like lens affectations. I even, I probably won't use that hood because I like lens flares. It seems like a lot of times what people want is something that's just a digital camera that looks like a film camera so they can feel cool. But I do like the film cameras and the limitations and the problems that, of film camera. What I don't like is the price of film. So this seems like a really good choice for me because it seems like the perfect mix between the two. One of the things about these Fuji X100 cameras or the Fuji line of cameras in general that people love is the film recipes. 
these simulate actual films that existed and still do exist. I mean, I loved this camera. I still love this camera, but it never looked like film. This was great for video, but I never liked taking photos with it. The Sony had a digital viewfinder. The Fuji has a viewfinder that's both optical, digital, and hybrid. You can choose. So I could look through it and just see the real world like glass and have no idea what my exposure and my focus is looking like. Like the original analog rangefinder cameras. Or I can switch to either the hybrid or the full digital view. It's up to me. So far what I can say is just feeling this in my hand, there's a nice weight to it. It's comparable in weight to the Sony. And that's something that this adds too. You can add some grain to your pictures to get more of that filmic look. So what I plan on doing is picking one recipe and pretending like I'm loading film into my camera and I'm gonna go out and I'm going to shoot with that one recipe and see what the results are. And then I'm gonna to switch to another one and another one and I want to explore all of them. I'm really looking forward to playing with this.